So this PCY algorithm improves upon the a priori algorithm. The next, we will talk about some refinements for this PCY algorithm to make it even more memory efficient. One refinement is the multi-stage algorithm. The key idea is that after pass one of the PCY algorithm, we can rehash only those pairs that satisfy the following two conditions. The first condition is that i and j are frequent. And this is the same old condition as the PCY. The second condition is that the pair i, j hashes to a frequent bucket from pass one. Therefore, if you do this, then you get a second pass table. And in this middle pass, we can then filter out even more infrequent pairs. And the drawback of this approach is that it requires free passes over the data. So let me go into more details. Um, this is the overall process of the multi-stage algorithm. In the past one, it's exactly the same. We count the items and we hash the pairs. And in the second pass, we will shrink it into a bitmap. And here starts the difference. When we build the second hash table, we will only hash the pairs, which satisfy the two conditions, right? The first condition is that IJ are frequent. The second is that IJ hash to a frequent bucket here. And then we get the second hash table. And in the third pass, we will then count only the pairs that has the bit one in both bitmap. And of course, the pair also needs to satisfy the original condition, which is that i and j are frequent. To write it down more clearly, we will count only those pairs that satisfy these three conditions. The first condition will be both i and j are frequent items. The second will be that if we use the first hash function and hash this pair ij, it will hash to a bit that is one. And the third condition is that we use the second hash function and we'll hash this pair, it will hash to a bit one. And only if the pair satisfies all three conditions, we will count this pair. And one important point is that these two hash functions have to be independent. And, and what it means is that if two hash functions are independent, then the same pair may not be hashed to the same place in these two different hash tables. And you might be also wondering that why should why can't we just throw away the first hash table and look at the second hash table because the second hash table is like de derived from the first hash table. The reason is that if we ignore the first hash table, we may end up counting the number of frequent, frequent items, i and j, that first hash into a frequent bucket, and then it happened to hash into a frequent bucket in the second hash. And this is a waste of memory because you can see that this is never gonna be a frequent pair. Why? Because it has been hashed to an infrequent bucket before. So there's no way that it can be a frequent item pair. And you can see that if these two hash functions are not independent, or in fact, these two hash functions are identical, this would be an entirely different story. And another refinement we will talk about is multi-hash. And the key idea is quite simple. Um, the original PCY algorithm used one hash table and multi-hash will use multiple hash tables. For example, we can use two hash tables here. And in the past two, we will have two bitmap. And then we we'll, again, we will just count the candidate pair where if we hash them into the bit, both bit will be one. The risk of doing this is that since you now have two hash tables, so the number of buckets for each hash table will be, will be cut in half. And that means in as in expectation, you're doubling the average count of each bucket. So we have to be sure that most buckets will still not reach the count S. 
otherwise most bucket will become useless and you will not be able to eliminate any candidate pair. And if we can be sure of that, then we can get a benefit like the multi-stage, but we can do it in only two passes. And to summarize a bit on these PCY extensions, either multi-stage and multi-hash can use more than two hash functions. For example, the multi-stage can be can be in four passes and they can use three hash functions. And in multi-stage specifically, there's a point of diminishing returns since the bit vectors will eventually consume all the man memories, right? And for multi-hash, the bit vector occupy exactly what one PCY bit map does, but too many hash function will make most counts larger than zero. And as we mentioned before, if most hash function end up being has a bucket with number larger than zero, then it will do you any good because it, because at that point, we're not able to eliminate any candidate pairs.